Hey guys, just like last day here, back with another video. Um, I'm shocked at this. Um, and I want to play you this video here. It's basically Zionist police attacking and raiding Jewish neighborhoods. Why aren't they all the same? Is my question. And it begs it also, no, it doesn't beg. It also, um, I was watching a video with um, Rose Ambar in it, and she's obviously Jewish. Jewish and she she spoke about the issues in um in the country and she nails it down well in every single whether it be western or democracy democracy each or all of the people who are being ruled by these people whether it be the jewish or whether it be it doesn't matter what government they're under america or whatever they do not like what's happening and uh, i want to play you this first and then i'll go to get the roseanne bar one Basically, they are they don't like what's happening to the people in that flag they just showed, showed and it's not an Israeli flag. <laughs> There, guys, coming to the end anyway. Um, I'm gonna find you that Roseanne Barr one now. Um, <laughs> here you're gonna hear Roseanne Barr call it out, but before that, they're gonna talk, and I think it's worth listening to. It's 27 minutes, but I'm not gonna play 27 minutes um, of it at all. Uh, let's get it going. That's going on right now in Israel. What, what, oh, I'm sure you have thoughts on that. Well, what are your thoughts on what's going on there with Hamas in Israel? Well, I haven't stopped thinking about it since it happened. There's so many weird things to it. Uh, first of all, of course, I'm always praying for all children of the world uh, who are innocent and harm and in harm's way on every side of everything. Uh, I, I just think maybe we're on our way to a more sane world sometime soon where people do consider the innocence of children and, uh, and that hopefully would make them more intelligent and more uh more human that they'd be guided by that rather than uh, you know this kind of primitive get even thing which i hope is leaving and um i hope that that's going in the past but i i feel bad for all the all all of the innocent victims of my people my family lives there a lot of my family and uh it's just terrifying it's terrifying historically and uh, 
geographically and politically and in every way. And uh, and then when you really break it down and look at, look at the facts of it, it doesn't add up. Which ones? Well, the whole thing doesn't add up. Um, so you have to go, what is this really? And who benefits from this, right? You always have to ask mm -hmm. those questions. But it is weird that Israel, which is like, it has such high technology for all, all this uh, warning, warning signs, you know, oh, what do you call it? Their defense, their defense is, is, is top notch, billions and billions. We even give them billions and billions each yeah. year. Yeah, the world's best. Yeah. None of it was How did they functioning. Not How did None they... of it was functioning. Well, they got through, and then they went all the way back without one alarm sounding. Well, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal, this I, I too have family there. I was just there um, a few months ago. I took my mother for the first time in 30 years. By the way, my mom says hi, Roseanne. Oh, fan. nice. Um, Say hi but, back. I will. She's probably watching this, smiling right now. But you talked about having family there. I was just there. I saw the protests that were going on on the ground. They're protesting against Bibi Netanyahu, mm -hmm. uh, sort of a Trump-like figure, you know, famous, political. He's been around forever. Um, but the the in in one capacity, they think that they took their eyes off the ball. Lesson that can be learned here in America today. While you're creating. Divis divisiveness internally, there's always someone externally willing to attack you. Thank God that we have yeah, the Atlantic and the Pacific. Yeah, but it doesn't seem that way when their own infrastructure didn't work. Well, here, so here's the point. So what does that mean? That means, and I've been trying to say this to Jewish people for 100 years, uh, uh, and to Americans and to everybody, you know, there's an enemy within. And I think we all know that. And what are we going to do about it? Uh, you can't ignore it. And, you know, you look at Israel and everything that's going on there, and they have basically the same problem that we have here in America. Uh, people who um, hate the place they live. They hate the government that they live under. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that, you know, like a lot of people say, e Egypt warned them three to five days ahead that it was coming and they did nothing. So what does it really mean? Was it allowed? Was it like Pearl Harbor where uh, they say that our president knew that it was going to happen? But, you know, to do nothing was more expedient than to do something because doing something might have made it worse. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, then you have to look at the fact that I thought it was weird. I don't know if we can talk about this on your show, but that, 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 that those uh, vaccines were tested on Jewish people in Israel. And, you know, is this a captive population that the owners of the world think they can use as lab rats again and again and again, even in their own state? I mean, is it that big? Is it that horrible? And I kind of think, yeah, it is. And I think that uh, the people that were protesting for judicial reform is just like when they overturned Roe v. Wade here because it was a law created by judicial fiat, which is anything but American when a bunch of judges decide what the law is going to be. The, the laws are supposed to be made by people who, who elect legislators to pass those laws. But instead, that law was created by judges, and that isn't how our country works. That was a beginning of the overthrow of our, of our country, I think. And the same was in Israel. People were upset that their uh, left-wing judges were creating law there, and they, they were sick of it. And so the way the American press covers it is that, uh, you know, it, it was a right wing, blah, blah. But it wasn't. It was a people's. And they always seem to frame anything that comes from the people as a right wing thing. Populist. Yeah. They don't like populism for sure. But, uh, you know, I think that a lot of people who were, I've been to Israel, you know, and a, a lot of people there are, like the left here, they're very privileged. They're very like 
those educated people I talked about before, they're very arrogant and they're very privileged and they don't care about people you know, on the ground or the, do the real work that makes things go. They have nothing but contempt for them and because they're not, they're elitist. And I think that that was a, a, lot, of, a, a lot of that too. So I think about why did it happen and what does it all mean? And of course, then I get really upset too because that was my tweet that I got fired over. Mm-hmm. The Valerie Jarrett tweet? Yeah, mm-hmm. that that they unleashed, you know, everybody, I don't, you know, liberals think that Planet of the Apes, I guess, they think it's a movie about black people because they are that racist. <laughs> but it's it was actually Rod Serling himself who wrote it said it, it was a uh, movie about the German Holocaust of Jews at the beginning of it. And so they, I knew that that, Iran deal that Obama and Jarrett had authored was to unleash Planet of the Apes in Israel. And it did, and it did. And that's exactly what happened. And the ultimate end of it that they desire is a military lockdown state. And I think they did it there to test it, to bring it here and do it here next. Because you saw all those people that were out in every major blue city that were, you know, celebrating what happened to Jewish people. You know, they were flying Palestinian flags and uh, pro Hamas. I mean, we have Hamas in our Congress, but um, <laughs> yeah, when you look at Ilhan Omar, yeah, yeah. Was, what do you mean the they, they have they have the Palestinian flag outside her office with her with her door yeah. closed? Can you pull that up, Rob? Well, and the point that I was trying to make to you is like, how could this happen? How could this happen? Well, reference- how did it happen that we uh, are allowing? people say that a lot of the people that are coming across our border are Hamas and those kind of people, they are coming from the that? middle. Well, of course I do. What Look. percentage of people you think cross the border are Hamas? I'll, t- I'll tell you right now. I'm going to stop there for a second and interject and say this. This is something I'm, I've been concerned about in England because we have, we've got uh, problems with um, uh, borders as well, people crossing over and nobody knows where they're coming from to be fair. Nobody's saying where they're coming from. Could this be a catalyst for something bigger? Are, are these people seekers? And will they attack? And and if they do, what then happens to the people who live in these countries? Are they then ushered into this new digital system where everything is trapped, everybody's trapped, and they cajole us into that way? I don't know, but anyway, anyway let me finish this off. Roseanne, not to cut you off, 160 watch list, terror watch list suspects were caught at the U.S.-Mexican border in 2023, caught. And I talked about this. How many out of the, what, seven, eight million that came over, mm. and mind you, this administration's attitude is come in, come in, come in, come in. Now this happens, you think these people, mind you, and I heard this, Roseanne, I'm pretty sure you did too, that the UN, the Biden administration, has given these 18 to 24 year old war age fighting men, single, they're not coming over here with families, they give them like the cards, they give them this money thing where they're like, hey, listen, we'll keep replenishing the money, here's a cell phone, if we need you, we're gonna call you. What, what, what are they doing? So there's, and you nailed it, Roseanne, there's two things that happen with this, with this attack. Either A, they knew and they did nothing, or the intelligence, it was just failed again. Either way, somebody has to be held accountable because we have to figure I, out what the hell's going on. I think, I think we have to go, who's, who's, who benefits the most? So you think about it. Who do you think? Well, we're done. We're done in Congress with uh, talking about Joe Biden and the Ukraine, right? I think that's all been exposed, but they were just starting to go with what did Joe Biden do in China? What did not just Joe Biden, but all the crime families in DC, uh, you know, all the, all the political prostitutes that say they're representatives and senators, what deals did they make with China? Mm. And um, perhaps what happened there was part of the plan of the owners of the world uh, to distract from that. I think the people that ultimately uh, gain the most from it are uh, the people who are China and uh, 
the people in D.C. who are fighting and have been fighting since Trump was elected to keep their crimes out of the news. They keep the American people unaware and uneducated and ill-informed of the criminal enterprises they've run against the people and the people's money. And this brings me to a point where Roseanne Barr said uh, within her video, um, you know, you have these, um, who's made, who's, who, ben who benefits from all this? And I found this, the members of Congress who profit from war. And this is not something new. This has been going on for some time now. And I'm just going to let the machine play it to you. The members of Congress who profit from war. Here are the senators and representatives who own stock in Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, and other top defense contractors. Sludge produces investigative journalism on lobbying and money and politics. The American Prospect is republishing this article. It was shortly after midnight in Baghdad on Friday, January 3rd, when a missile strike ordered by President Trump killed Iranian General Ghassem Soleimani. When stock markets opened the next day, Dozens of members of Congress saw bumps in their portfolios as their holdings in defense contractors like Lockheed Martin and Raytheon increased in value on the possibility of war. Over the next three trading days, the leading defense industry stock index would surge 2.4% above Thursday's close. Among these members of Congress with personal investments in the defense industry are several who sit on committees that determine major sources of funding for defense companies and weapons contractors. According to a sludge review of financial disclosures, 51 members of Congress and their spouses own between $2.30 and $5.8 million worth of stocks in companies that are among the top 30 defense contractors in the world. Members of Congress generally report the values of their investments in ranges, so it's not possible to know exactly how much their stocks are worth. As Congress debates whether to limit President Trump's power to take military action against Iran, the complete list of senators and representatives who own defense stocks is displayed below in this article. 18 members of Congress, combined, own as much as $760,000 worth of stock of Lockheed Martin, the world's largest defense contractor in terms of overall defense revenues. The value of Lockheed Martin stock surged by 4.3% on the day after Soleimani's assassination, a day in which the Dow Jones Industrial Average overall traded down. Since December 27, 2019, the day an American contractor was killed by a rocket in Iraq, the aerospace and defense sector has outperformed all other sectors in the S&P 500, according to a January 8th market watch write-up of research from Bespoke Investment Group. Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, and L3 are each more than three standard deviations above their 50-day moving average, market watch wrote. Last week, the House of Representatives passed a resolution directing President Trump to terminate the use of the military to engage in hostilities in or against Iran unless Congress has authorized such action or to defend against an imminent threat. A similar resolution may be considered by the Senate this week. The House may vote on additional measures related to Iran, including Representative Ro Khanna's Democrat California bill to block funding for military action against Iran and Representative Barbara Lee's Democrat California bill to repeal the authorization for use of military force that Congress passed after 9-11. Rep. Khanna's wife, Ritu Khanna, owns as much as $376,000 in defense stocks. Khanna told Sludge in an email that he and his wife maintain independent finances and file taxes separately. I have not personally invested in any defense stocks, Khanna said. I will continue to fight for a progressive foreign policy for this country rooted in diplomacy and regional dialogue. That's why I have consistently voted against bloated defense spending and sought accountability from some of our nation's largest defense contractors. Members of Congress's investments in defense contractors may present more significant potential conflicts of interest than investments in other industries because the contractors rely heavily on defense spending that is approved by Congress for their revenue. More than 70% of Lockheed Martin's $51 billion in 2018 revenue came from sales to the U.S. government, for example. Companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Raytheon are considered pure plays because they sell their products almost exclusively to the government through appropriations approved by Congress. Members of Congress should divest from all investments tied to their congressional responsibilities and avoid any actual or potential conflicts of interest or ethics dilemmas, Scott Amy, general counsel at the Project on Government Oversight, told Sludge.
In the Senate, nearly one third of the members of the Defense Subcommittee of the Appropriations Committee own stocks and top defense contractors. The subcommittee is in charge of drafting the procurement section of the annual defense spending bill, which allocates funding for the Defense Department and specifies weapon systems and other goods for the department to purchase from private contractors. In the 2020 Defense Appropriations Bill, the subcommittee approved $1.85 billion for 18 more F-35 Joint Strike Fighter aircrafts and spare parts from Lockheed Martin. Subcommittee member Senator Roy Blunt, Armo, owns as much as $100,000 worth of stock in Lockheed Martin. The subcommittee also recommended $1.1 billion for 6 P-8A Poseidon aircraft, which is a maritime patrol and reconnaissance plane made by Boeing. Subcommittee members Diane Feinstein, Democrat California, Susan Collins, Republican Maine, and Jerry Moran, Republican Kansas, own as much as a combined $750,000 in Boeing stock. A spokesperson for Feinstein, whose husband owns as much as $650,000 worth of Boeing stock, told Sludge that the senator has no involvement in her husband's financial and business decisions, adding that the senator's assets are in a blind trust, which has been the case since her arrival in the Senate. The House Foreign Affairs Committee oversees arms controls and exports, yet at least four of its members have investments in defense companies whose foreign sales fall under their jurisdiction. Foreign arms sales that are proposed by the president are referred to the Foreign Affairs Committee for approval, modification, or rejection. The committee may hold hearings on the sales to ask questions or raise concerns before the sales are approved, and it can initiate a joint resolution of disapproval in order to block or modify a sale. Companies that Foreign Affairs Committee members are invested in, including Honeywell, Lockheed Martin, and General Dynamics, have been approved for foreign sales and partnerships in recent years. House Oversight and Reform Committee Government Operations Subcommittee Chairman Rep. Jerry Connolly, Democrat Virginia, owns as much as $400,000 worth of stock in Lidos, which has paid billions of dollars to provide information technology services for the Defense Department. In May 2019, Lido's CEO Roger Crona testified before Connolly's committee in favor of legislation calling on the government to guarantee back pay for contractors in the wake of government shutdowns. Connolly had written a letter to House appropriators months earlier seeking support for such a bill. Senators Sherrod Brown, Democrat Ohio, and Jeff Merkley, Dior, have reintroduced their ban conflicted trading act, which would prohibit members of Congress from buying and selling individual stocks, giving them six months from enactment to divest their shares and from serving on corporate boards, something that's already banned in the Senate but not in the House. Members of Congress serve the American people, not their stock portfolios, Senator Brown previously told Sludge. Elected officials have access to non-public information that can affect individual companies and entire industries. There must be more accountability and transparency to prevent members from using this information and abusing their positions for personal gain. Four companies, Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and General Dynamics, make up 90% of arms sales to Saudi Arabia in deals worth over $125 billion, according to a July 2019 report by the Center for International Policy. American-made weapons have been used by Saudi Arabia's government in the war in Yemen, with a death toll that has risen over 100,000, including 12,000 civilians from attacks targeting them. Nearly half of the federal discretionary budget goes to defense, $623 billion in 2018. In his 2020 Pentagon budget request, President Trump proposed increasing that amount to $750 billion. These annual totals under state total military spending, a May report from the Center for International Policy found that, counting all 10 funding sources for war fighting, the actual total amount spent on defense in 2019 would be $1.254 trillion nearly as much as the $1.359 trillion spent in the entire discretionary budget, including the Departments of Health and Human Services, Education, Homeland Security, Energy, and more, of the at least 380 former high-ranking Department of Defense officials who went through the revolving door to become lobbyists or senior executives in 2018, around one quarter joined the top five defense contractors, according to the Project on Government Oversight, Lockheed Martin, Boeing, Raytheon, General Dynamics, and Northrop Grumman. Current U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper is a former lobbyist at Raytheon, which over the past two election cycles spent $6.4 million on campaign contributions and $20 million on federal lobbying. Sludge built a tool that scrapes the House and Senate financial disclosure portals and extracts machine-readable data. 
Data from financial disclosures that were handwritten and scanned were manually entered by sludge reporters. The Senate data comes in two sets, one for the most recently filed annual reports, which cover the entire 2018 calendar year, and another for the periodic transaction reports, which log stock purchases or sales within 45 days of the trade. By adding in 2019 purchases and sales with the 2018 annual data, we arrived at finalized totals for senators as of December 13, 2019. The House data does not include periodic transaction reports, so it's possible that House members have sold or bought defense stocks since December 31, 2018 that are not reflected in this article. That's it, guys. So think about it. Think about it from a perspective where these lawmakers are investing in killing. Think about it from that literal perspective. I know this is a bit of a long video, but these people do not care about life. They invest in war machines, and hence we're being led from pillar to post with regards to what's happening in the world right now. This is all about money, and it's a banker's war. All wars are bankers' wars, and politicians make a lot of profit from it. So we're not going to see um, uh, interest rates come down in time soon because they've got to pay for this stuff, ain't they? And they've got to rob us at the same time. Anyway, Digital Tech Lifestyle out. Like and subscribe. Take care of yourself.